Welcome. This is my latest video on the ESP32C3 microcontroller, and I'll put a link in the description to my ESP32 playlist where you can find my other videos. And I'll also put a link to this microcontroller on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. That being said, it's been sold out recently, so I'll also put a link below to some other ESP32 microcontrollers. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the ESP Rainmaker, and I'm just going to be walking through this Get Started page. So you could just walk through this on your own. You don't have to watch this video, but I know some people like to watch this stuff so they know what to expect if they're going to do it themselves. So what ESP Rainmaker is, it's sort of a framework for connecting apps to the microcontroller. So in this tutorial, I'll be using an app on my iPad, but it could be Android or iPhone, and it'll be a switch and it will switch an LED on and off on the microcontroller. So as I've said in my previous videos, I'm not an expert at this, I'm learning this myself. So I just want to put that out there so you know what perspective I'm filming this in. So this could be used if you say, hook this up to your garage door and you could open up an app and tap a button and have it open or close your garage doors, things like that. You could have it turn things on and off, turn lights on and off. So this looks like it could be a very versatile feature of the ESP32. The nice thing about it is you don't have to do any programming on your smartphone or your tablet because the app is already created. So I have two screens up here on my Mac. The first one is the website with the getting started and I'll put a link in the description of this web page. And then below it I have a terminal and I'm in my ESP directory. If I hit LS here, you can see the different projects I've already tried. And I have the microcontroller plugged into my Mac. So the getting started page has a little diagram, explaining what's happening. So you're going to have your smart device connected to the ESP32. They're using an ESP32 S2. And I actually have one of these on order, the S2. I've been having trouble with my C3 getting it to work with the Arduino software, but I think the S2 does work with Arduino software. And I think the C3 is just too new. So there are a couple different features different between the C3 and the S2. I may make a video on that. I'm not sure yet. So I'll scroll down here. So as a prerequisite, you want to set up the ESP IDF and I've done all that. And we'll want to download the app on our device. So I'll scroll down here a little more and I'll go to this Get ESP Rainmaker project. So here we have Git clone and then a URL for ESP Rainmaker. So I'll copy that. I'll go down here in this directory. And I don't think I need to do it yet, but I'm going to type get underscore IDF. I'll load my environment just so I don't forget later. I'll paste in the Git clone and I'll let that run and that will download. Next we have these steps here. It says CD path to ESP Rainmaker example switch. So I'll clear this. If I type LS here, we can see ESP Rainmaker. So I'll type CD ESP dash Rainmaker forward slash examples forward slash switch. I'll hit enter. Now I want to set up this ESP port to my serial device. So I'll type LS space forward slash dev forward slash CU asterisk. So it shows me two devices here. I want the second one. So I'll copy that and I'll type export space ESP port equals and then I'll paste in that device. You don't need to paste in this comment after it. So I'll clear my screen. I'll type idf.py space set dash target space ESP32 and I'll type C3 here. So in the instructions it says S2 but I'm using the C3 so I'll do that and I'll hit enter. Okay, that's completed. I'll clear the screen. I'll type idf.py space build. I'll hit enter. So while this is building, I'm going to switch over to my tablet, my iPad, and we'll download the app and get it started. Okay, so if you go to the app store, you want to search for ESP Rainmaker, and I have it here. I'll hit the cloud to download it. And you may need to authenticate if you haven't done that yet. I'll hit open. It's giving me options to sign up and I'll sign in with Apple. I'll hit continue. It's asking me to sign in, so I'll sign in with Touch ID. Okay, so it says no device added, so we're not quite ready to add a device. Okay, that's completed, clear this out. Next I'll type idf.py space erase underscore flash. I'll hit enter. Okay, that's completed. Clear that. I'll type idf.py space flash space monitor. I'll hit enter. Okay, so that gave us a QR code and I've increased my font here so it's kind of hard to see, but it's kind of broken up and it doesn't work. So what they also provide you with here is a URL. So I'll copy that URL. I'll open up a new browser and I'll paste that in. And then I'll have a pretty looking QR code there. So now on my iPad, I'm going to hit add device and I'll pull up that QR code and it will pair up the application with my ESP32. 
So it's going to ask me to select a Wi-Fi network, so I'll do that. It says device added successfully, so I'll hit OK. And now we see this where it says switch. So if I tap on that, it takes me to this switch application, and I can edit the name, I can name it whatever I want. And if I hit power, it will turn the light on and off. So you can see the light here on the ESP32 going on and off with the app. So I don't know how to program my own things with this yet, but this is an interesting tutorial that shows the power of this. So once you get this working, you could have different switches and things here in the app, and then you could have it trigger the GPIO and have it turn things on and off. I think you can also feed sensor data back to the app, things like that. So I think I said in a previous video, I want to be able to monitor temperature. So that's a goal of mine would be to have the temperature show up in the app. So I wanted to shoot this quick clip here. If you go into that examples directory, there's other applications besides Switch, and one of them is temperature sensor. So the ESP32 has its own temperature sensor on it, and I ran that and got it loaded up. So we have temperature sensor here in the app, and it says 27 degrees Celsius. So as this heats up and cools down, it will change that. But that would equate to about around 78 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's a lot cooler than that where I'm at right now. I don't know, it's probably 70 degrees maybe maybe even 60s, 68. So it's not calibrated very well. I'd rather use one of these temperature sensors. It'd be a little more accurate. But for a few dollars, you'd hook this up and you can remotely read the temperature to some extent. So if you wanted to check if something was freezing, you could put this in a freezing area, see what it reads, and then you know what to look for, and then install this somewhere, pull up the app, and you can check out the temperature remotely. So that's pretty slick. And it required next to no work. You just had to go through the tutorial, but instead of doing switch, you just have to do temperature sensor. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Hopefully someday I can make my own application with this Rainmaker and I'll be able to present to you here on my channel. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click a like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.